Hello my friends, QuestWise here, and today I have a very, very special treat for you. I was able to acquire, through some connections, uh, a, a package of everything that was released for Free RPG Day 2020. And today we're going to go through each and every one of them. Now I've seen a lot of people uh, online talk about, in, in a few videos, mostly just pictures, some of the stuff that they've received or they were able to pick up uh, via their friendly local game stores for free RPG day 2020. Uh, and, but I've not seen a video and maybe I just haven't looked hard enough, but I have not seen a video that has actually went through every single one of these. And I want to do that today. Uh, it won't be a thorough intense look at each one of them. Uh, but it will be a look through and a flip through through each one of these books. I want to show you everything that was available via Free RPG Day 2020. Now, if you don't know what Free RPG Day is, it's a lot like Free Comic Book Day. Uh, it originated in 2007, and it is a program that happens once a year in which different publishers will jump on board and they will publish a small either adventure or quick start uh, for their game to introduce people to new avenues of role-playing. The first year, 2007, the list of sponsors included D&D 3.5, uh, Call of Cthulhu quick start, uh, Castles and Crusade quick start, Changeling the Dreaming Dreaming Adventure and, and many quick start, uh, Dungeon Crawl Classics had an adventure and, and, and several others. This year, the list of people that had contributed and sponsored grew to Goodman Games, Roll20, Paizo, Q Workshop, WizKids, Ninth Level Games, Mantic Games, Fantasy Flight Games, Renegade Game Studios, Ani Games, Dave Taylor Miniatures, Hit Point Press, Magpie Games, and Q P Cubicle 7. I love this day, and, and unfortunately, the small town in which I live in northern Michigan, nobody really uh, celebrates Free RPG Day. I plan to rectify that. Uh, I'm, I'm planning on either sponsoring it myself or finding a store that will co-sponsor it with me, and I really want to make this a thing because, as you'll see today, this is a great program. Um, you know, Dungeons & Dragons is the king of right now is the, is the is the ruler of the role playing market and it's a great game fifth edition is f fabulous and i love it but there are so many other great games on the market and uh and tie-ins to to the game market itself for role playing tabletop role playing games and i want to show them to you today this is going to be a little bit longer of a video cuz we're going to walk through each and every one of these but i wanted to give you a full sort of look at some of the stuff that you can expect from free RPG day, maybe in 2020, uh, from 2020 and, and maybe what you can hopefully look forward to, uh, in 2021. So let me get this stuff out of your way and we'll start going through these, uh, bit by bit. So the first thing I want to look at is this here. This is put out, uh, by Mantic Game Studios. This is a small pamphlet. It's by uh, Mantic Game Studios, an army painter, Dave Taylor Miniatures, on how to paint a library. And it is literally just that. It is a small introduction as how to paint a library for your 3D terrain uh, tabletop for, for role-playing games. It talks about preparing your models and priming them. Uh, it talks about uh, painting techniques. Uh, it talks about how to, you know, kind of step by step going from your black base coat all the way up to, you know, painted uh, titles on the shelf. So if you're into painting your own miniatures, you know, 3D, be they 3D printed or purchased from a store, um, several different places you can buy these cool sort of accessories now uh, through WizKids, I believe, does some of these as well. Um, this is a great little guide to uh, adding uh, the, you know, some techniques to painting uh, your terrain and stuff as well. And then, of course, some ads for Army Painter, Dave Taylor Miniatures, Manta Game Studios, and stuff. 
Next, let's take a look at this. I found this really, really interesting. This is called Level 1. This is a, a indie RPG anthology. Sorry about the glare of light there. Indie RPG anthology. And what this is are little mini role-playing games. This first one is called Moose Trip, uh, where you're playing a, a moose living in a human-occupied wilds of Montana, uh, and you've just eaten your favorite psychedelic mushrooms. They're all about one, eh, two to four pages long. There's some ads and stuff in here as well, too. This one's from Pelgrane Press. But there, this is a collection of little, mini, minimalist role-playing games that are great for one-shots. And when you're trying to kill some time, maybe in between uh, at a convention for other games. But the really, and a variety of different stuff, from the crazy moose, uh, psychedelic mushrooms, to one about um, uh, being in a rock band, graveyard shift. I mean, there's just a, a variety of, from modern day to fantasy to, um, at least we have tonight, which is a really interesting one. <clears throat> You are a slave on a Roman uh, ship, and it's about telling stories while you're rowing onto war. Most of these are very narrative, not very crunch heavy, because it really you only get a couple pages for rules. But a really, really interesting um, guide uh, uh, of small mini games. I, I think this was a really interesting way to present these and uh, a nice way to sort of get them all together into one collection of, of things. I hope they do more of this. It says volume one 2020. So hopefully there'll be a volume two next year as well. These two kind of go together. Uh, in a sense, they're by different publishers, but they're both uh, powered by kids on bikes. <clears throat> we'll look at this one first. This is the Junior Brave Survival Guide. This is a setting for kids on bikes. Uh, I really like this. It looks like sort of like a um, Boy Scout handbook kind of thing or Girl Scout handbook, a camper's handbook. And inside the colors are sort of muted and has that very kids on bikes feel. It gives you some basic rules. Uh, this is used in conjunction with Kids on Bikes, so I don't think flipping through it, I mean, you kind of need the rules from Kids on Bikes to make this happen, but uh, it's most of these are pretty self-contained. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I really like that. I like the fact that a lot of these don't require you to have the full game in order to try them out. They'll be sort of condensed uh portions of the rules that you need just to play the scenario that they provide. And I really appreciate this. Uh, what this is, is a adventure campaign setting. You'll see the, the actual camp right here, the town, uh, is kids who come back from a uh, summer camp and an apocalypse has happened. And it's, uh, the idea that kids now have to try to deal with what's happening in, in the world after having been away at summer camp and some small sample adventures back in here. Penelope is the town that you, that this all takes place in. Very, very cool. There's a character sheet in the back. So you're able to make your own characters using the kids on bikes rules. The second one is, uh, powered by kids on bikes, but it is kids on brooms. This is finally, and I'm really impressed with this. And I'm really uh, happy that someone finally has gone about and 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 done a kids at a magical school, etc. Uh, you, you know what I'm referencing to. Uh, uh, for copyright reasons, I don't want to say the name of the book series, but an extremely popular book series uh, where kids go to a magical school and get into all sorts of troubles and to take classes with uh, strange professors. And this is that game that's going to emulate this. This is very well done. It very much captures that feel. And, and you'll see uh, as you read through it that there are, uh, the, again, these are very uh, sort of uh, condensed rules. And then full rules, you'll be able to get a section on how to build your own school. And this one it sort of has a default setting for you. 
there's a lot of great stuff in here um from from wands the, uh, what your wands are made out of what the core of the wand is um games uh with you know flying brooms and such i try to be as vague as possible and not touch upon the fact and they're very they they did a very great job at sort of scratching the serial numbers off and yet still capturing the feel of this type of a game uh, but this is like a full rule book there's a full i mean you're able to uh you know create your your own characters in this as rules for doing all that kind of stuff there are some sort of character sheets in the back that are based upon archetypes but uh really really well done and all, and if you haven't checked out kids on bikes is a, a great um a great game that uh was done by <clears throat> doug Lewandowski and uh you know hunters entertainment renegade game studios really really cool if you're into magical kids at schools and uh you know wands and brooms wink wink uh this is this is a game you're gonna really want to look for the next one humblewood this got me really excited this is a tie-in for fifth edition as you can see down here in which you are playing forest creatures uh, sort of anthropomorphic, anthropomorphic type creatures, but uh, and and I had been kind of curious about this this game, this title for a while, because uh, I love anthropomorphic creature anth anthropomorphic creatures. My words are not coming today, but I and you know things like uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, that kind of stuff. The the Palladium uh, games in Palladium books games in which you get to play. Those types of things. I love mutant animals. Uh, Humblewood does that in a 5th edition fantasy version. Think of things like the Red Wall series of books. Mouse Guard. Um, a variety of other really popular stuff out there right now. That has sort of that the, you know, mutant animal type things. But the layout of this just blew me away. This, 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 this is a product that is... While it is sort of just a small pamphlet, like really drew my attention, really, really brought me into this game. And, and I'm super excited about this now, and I can't wait to check out the full product. So you're, you're given some characters in here to play, but there's an adventure that goes on in this as well. Everything you need to play, it's, it's um, you know, is contained within this as well. Um you do need uh, the 5th edition rules to kind of partake in the entire richness of this setting. Um, but all in all, there's some really great stuff in here. Uh, some puzzles. Uh, I love this. I mean, the artwork of this game blows me away. Like, this character, this NPC, this villain is really cool. Uh, and in the back here, it talks about how to get involved in the full game. There's a lot of great stuff for this out already. These are some of your sample characters back here. Uh, so they don't give you rules in this pamphlet on how to create your own characters, but uh, there, you know, there is in the full game as well too. The other thing that this came with is a small deck of cards. And again, if you've seen some of my videos before, you know how much I love bits and chits and add-ons and stuff. Um, you know. Tacti tactile things that you can use at a gaming table. Uh, this this allows you to uh, look at the, you know, this is like a little print card, talks about the thing. And here are some of the villains. These are like creature cards with full art on one side, full color art on one side, and all the stats on the back. So if you saw my review sort of of the D&D 5th fifth edition uh, monster and spell cards from Gale Force 9. You'll know that I really enjoy them, but uh, at the same time, I, I wish that they had a little bit more, that there was a little bit more detail. There's a little bit more of like a, an art piece to it that was kind of lacking in those. And while I appreciate those for being laminated that you could write on them, these are definitely not. These are more sort of a tarot size card, thin cardboard. I appreciate this more than I do the lamination. I love the full color art and illustrations on these. The layout of the stats are pretty, you know, pretty standard on the back, but really, really well done. And we have the Raptor deckhand. We have the Volpine buccaneer. And here he is, Scops the Beast Breaker. Here's the big bad guy. 
uh, for this adventure that you're going to get. Um, and it's a two card spread. This is what I appreciate about this. This is uh, Scop's st statistics card. And because he has so many special abilities and equipment and stuff, they've done a second card that's sort of a close-up. So you, you can tell the difference between them. But man, I mean, they could have just went with the same art on both of these, but they didn't. And I really appreciate that. And then further rules on the back for that. And they gave us a whole bunch of cards for the different villains and bad guys. Some One of the magic weapons that you're going to encounter and, and as well. So I really, really dig this game. And I can't wait to check out the full version. Very well done. Kudos to the Humblewood team because that's beautiful. Next up, we're going to go to the little bit larger sized uh, the booklets. Um, this is Root. Uh, I was not very interested in this when it first came out, uh, when I first saw advertisements for this. And I think mostly it was because of the art style. wasn't a big fan of it. It's a little too cartoony for me. Uh, but I took a chance, and I read through this, and I'm hooked. Uh, the rules for this are very, very cool. This is based upon a board game, I believe. Um yeah, based upon the winning uh, game Root, a game of woodland might and right board game board game by Letter Games. In the Root RPG, you play vagabonds going on adventures and changing the woodland with your actions. Uh, so again, like I said, I'm not wasn't a huge fan of the art style, but the game blew me away. Now I'm a very visual person, so a lot of times, um, you know, especially with like comics and stuff, art will make or break a book for me. But I was really impressed by this game. The other thing I really appreciate about this thing is that even in the inside of the cover, they've already started to make use of it. It's not just a blank page. It's not just an advertisement. It actually has uh, basic rules for the game. And I, I love that. I love that about it. This is kind of a based on the uh, uh, Powered by the Apocalypse idea. We have moves that you can take. And uh, I'll go into, in, in fact, next, uh, this coming Tuesday, I'll be doing a review of a zine based on the uh, Powered by the Apocalypse games. And I'll go into more detail about how that rule system works. But basically, you're rolling two six-sided dice and adding some bonuses to it. On a 10 or better, you get absolute, whatever you're attempting to do, uh, you, you accomplish it. On a seven through nine, you accomplish it, but there's some sort of a a, a butt to that uh, uh, that line, and then anything below that, you sort of fail. Uh, it's super simple, um, and and so I feel like having read that already, this kind of sets the mood for how Root actually plays. And like I said, I'm not a fan of the art style, but man, the game itself is really cool. The idea that you are woodland creatures trying to protect your homeland and the series of um, of, of glades and, and clearings that you're trying to protect is really appealing to me. Again, I like the, uh, in the mutant animal, anthropomorphic animal idea. Uh, they give you some playbooks in here, which is part of the Powered by the Apocalypse ideas. You have playbooks instead of character sheets that has basically all the rules you need on the character sheet. To play the game itself. So they do give you some pre predetermined uh, characters. But uh, again, enough of everything in here to play the game. Here are the basic rules to play. And I really appreciate that from these companies that put this out. Because then it's not just like, hey, here's an adventure for a game that you probably don't even own. It's like, hey, here's an adventure. Here are the rules, the basic rules that you need to play this adventure. Hope you like it. Come buy our stuff. I, I appreciate that. I really do. Weapon moves, reputation moves. Uh, this is, it, it really, this really changed my mind. Uh, the writing in this, the layout of this, uh, really trumped even the, uh, the artwork that I wasn't a big fan of. The glade is, is, is the area that you're fighting over, you're trying to protect. So really nice stuff. Uh, here's some important residents that live in the glade that you're trying to protect. Uh, some some important places. How to game master. There's a section in here on how to run the game itself. Or at least this adventure. 
and then here you get the characters the pre-generated characters and their playbooks and they're all really cool they're they just some really unique and, and innovative ideas on characters and uh i i'm a changed man i i am definitely excited about checking out root uh in its full iteration next up we have key forge this is a game that is powered by uh it's produced by fantasy flight games and it's powered by their genesis engine um this is the engine that runs the star wars role-playing game uh the genesis which was their sort of generic uh system that they added and this is sort of a tie-in to that generic system expansion of the rules key forge if you don't know, is a, a non-collectible card game that was produced uh, or designed by Richard Garfield, uh, who was the guy who designed Magic the Gathering. And Keyforge, I've had a lot of fun with. Keyforge is a very fun game. Uh, when you buy the cards, you buy a deck already pre... It's sort of randomly produced. The decks all work together, but they no two decks will ever be the same. Uh, the nice thing about that is you can just show up at a store... Uh, if you know the rules, you grab a pack of cards, crack them, or, you know, a, a deck of cards, crack them up, and you're ready to play right out of the right out of the package. And I like that. I think it's really cool. Uh, while I really like Magic the Gathering, I really appreciate Magic the Gathering. It's one of those games where you just it will bleed you drive money because you're constantly collecting cards. With Keyforge, you don't do that. So what they've done here, Fantasy Flight has teamed up with them and created. In fact, I think Keyforge is actually produced by Fantasy Flight as well, too, If I, now that I think about it. Uh, but they brought that world into uh, the Genesis system that they use for their role-playing games. Interesting. Um, you, do, um, you, you do need some proprietary dice if you have any of these from Star Wars or Genesis that uses the Genesis dice. I wasn't a big fan of that. I, I can't say that. I, I like the dice system. They're all based upon symbols, not numbers. There are different uh, um, you know, sizes of dice uh, as far as like D8s, D6s, D12s. And you roll your pool of dice, consulting the symbols, uh, successes and failures, and then you narrate out how that works. I wasn't a fan of this, and this might make me a heretic. I was not a fan of the Star Wars system uh, using the Genesis rule set. Uh, it it just didn't do it for me, and it's probably because I'm a huge Star Wars D6 fan of the old West End games days, uh, and so I wasn't a real big fan of that. I do like this dice mechanic. I think it's cool. I think it's very narrative, but it didn't do it for me for Star Wars. So they're using it for Keyforge. Keyforge is an interesting sort of mishmash of a little bit of everything. It is fantasy. It is science fiction. It is aliens from Mars. It is strange uh, experimentations by scientists. It's a little bit of everything. It's a little pulpy. It's a little goofy. Um, this picture will show you a little bit of what I'm talking about. There's an alien here. There's some kind of strange steampunky contraption here. Um, there's a very fantasy sort of paladin-esque with this giant magical sword. It's all in Keyforge. It's all these different worlds and stuff being brought together called the Crucible. Um, but all in all, very nice presentation. Very cool. If you're a fan of Keyforge or you're a fan of the, of the, uh, uh Genesis system, it's definitely worth checking out. But the presentation is very nice. It's very full color. It's very beautiful, very bright full adventure in here um it also gives you a lot more if you're a keyforge player keyforge fan it gives you a lot of new details into a lot of those different races and um uh, factions as well so very well done nice little product here again as well and some ads for some of the others uh realms of taranoth uh, android very nice all right. Next up is a game that I've heard about for a long time and I've never had a chance to play, although I had some friends who really, really like this game. This is called Overlight. This is by Renegade Game Studios. This is sort of a strange fantasy world that all has to deal with light and the colors of light. And it's very uh, dreamlike and surreal kind of, uh, of a role-playing game. 
Again, this gives you enough uh, to play. It gives you an adventure as well as the basic rules on how to play. The book is very colorful. It's very bright. Uh, the, the, the lettering is very large, so it's a little easy to read. Because it's more into the detail of the thing. Uh, some of this artwork is, is very sort of watercolor-esque. It's beautifully done. It's a thing. Like I said, I had never had a chance to play this game. I've looked at buying it several times uh, and just never have. I know that they use polyhedral dice, but they also have, if you buy their dice set, some of the D4s are larger. And that represents something in the game that you can use a special ability, almost like a hero point kind of thing. Uh, like I said, I don't know too much about it other than just what I've read in here. But it seems really cool. It seems like a really unique take on a fantasy um, a setting, play style. And so the artwork is, is beautiful, but it's sort of, sort of a watercolor-esque kind of... Um, uh, it's not true to life kind of stuff. It's very sort of vague and, and, and muddy a little bit, which I, I enjoy, enjoy. I think it's really cool. But uh, Overlight, a little map of the place that you're playing. This is just a part of the world. Uh, this is just the, the plane that you're actually playing on. From what I get, it's sort of like a, almost, if you're familiar with um, Spelljammer, it's got a little bit of a vibe of that kind of thing. You have flying ships and you have these different world settings, and these different crazy floating continents and whatnot. There's a section on the rules, a chroma test. Again, like I said, it's all based upon like light and spirit and colors very cool concept An amazingly cool concept and then some pre-generated characters back here as you can see uh, the the stats are based upon die types so this person uh, has a compassion of d10 a logic of d6 they have a spirit pool and i believe is used with the d4 uh, and some cool powers photosynthesize yeah, some really, really fun stuff. And just more of the characters, pre-generated characters in the back there. But uh, Renegade Game Studios, Lightbreaker Studios, check it out, Overlight. Uh, I will probably del delve into this at some point very soon. Next, we have Warhammer 40,000 role-playing game, Wrath and Glory, this is an adventure called Reign of Mercy. This was a game that was picked up. I cannot remember off the top of my head what company had this, but then they dropped the line and Cubicle 7 picked it up in order to sort of companion it with their Warhammer Fantasy role-playing game, as well as their Warhammer Age of Sigma role-playing game. And now they have the Wrath and Glory uh, game as well too. So Warhammer 40,000 is a games workshop tabletop miniatures game. It's been around for decades. I played the hell out of it back in college and a little bit after college as well. The lore of this universe, be it fantasy or science fiction, is intense and wonderful and deep and amazing. Uh, and they've now brought it to a tabletop uh, as a as as a role playing game, pen and paper role playing game, and I'm super excited because I love this universe. I think it's a really beautiful rendition. <laughs> I say beautiful because it's all about war and and destruction and chaos and demons and stuff. But I really enjoy this world setting. And I mean, who wouldn't want to play a space marine, right? Or an Eldar, or an orc, a space orc. But this is an adventure, again, very beautifully well laid out. It's very gorgeous. Um, they do give you some uh, pre-made characters in here as well. This is very short, actually. It's a very short adventure. Um, I'm trying to see if there's a page count. It's only about 15 pages long or so. The characters. Uh, does this one actually go over? Gives you a little bit of history. I don't know if this one actually gives you. Yeah, this one doesn't really give you. I mean, it talks a little bit about wrath points and stuff, but it doesn't really give you a a quick start. It's kind of a bummer. Oh yeah, because it was a little bit. It talks about actions and damage here. So as you play through it, 
and kind of walks you through almost an introductory adventure as, as to how this how the system works, but not a lot of detail into the game system. There's a lot more to that. But Wrath and Glory, Warhammer 40k, Reign of Mercy adventure. And then next we get two from Paizo. We get a Pathfinder adventure and as well as a Starfinder adventure. I haven't really delved into Pathfinder a lot. Not not the new second edition. I've played a lot of Pathfinder back in the day. I you know I played through D and D three point oh three point five. Uh, I jumped into Pathfinder mostly again because I'm a very um, I'm a very very uh, visual person and uh, this the artwork in both Starfinder and Pathfinder have always been super appealing to me. Uh, which is one of the main reasons I jumped into it. It's not my favorite game system. I think I prefer 5th edition over Pathfinder and Starfinder, but I do appreciate both of these very much. Uh, so we get the um, Adventure in Little Trouble in Big Absalom. It's kind of a quirky, tongue-in-cheek kind of thing where you're playing kobolds in this adventure. They do give you pre-generated characters for this as well. And uh, But this adventure is... You would need the the Pathfinder 2.0 uh, quick start or um, playtest rules or the full version of the rules to play this. They, they give you quick start characters, but uh, there's no real rules in this adventure. But still, quirky, fun, kind of campy. I dig it. Uh, I believe this is in response to last year, two years ago, they did an adventure called uh, We Be Goblins. And uh, yeah. So that's part of that kind of thing. We're playing kobolds instead. And then the Starfinder, Starfinder Adventure called Skitter Home by Jason Keeley. Again, same type of thing. You get some map tiles. Uh, you get a full adventure, but again, no real game rules. So you'll need the Starfinder rules in order to play this. And Starfinder has, uh, there's a lot of things that, about it that appeal to me and a lot of things that I'm not a huge fan of, but... Like I said, Pathfinder is just not one of my favorite games, but I do appreciate uh, it's it's I appreciate it as a role playing game, and do find that there's a lot of merits in it. Last but not least, definitely not least, because this was my favorite part of the whole package: the Dungeon Crawl Classics Quick Start Rules and Brand New Adventure. I love Dungeon Crawl Classics. I love Goodman games. I think that this game is a is is you know homage to seventies over the top heavy metal role playing. And I you can see one of my videos before, back in the uh, in the catalog, where I talk about using Dungeon Crawl Classics uh, to run heavy metal weekends, which is a a thing that would you know COVID has kind of crushed. Um, but love the idea of have setting up weekends, uh, maybe once a month, where you just play some Dun Classics and pump some heavy metal in the background. And just amazing stuff. So uh, here is, you know, a, a quick start guide for the rules, which is nice because I'm going to bring this to, with me even with the big rule book. It gives you kind of a, 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 a smashed amount of the rules. It's exactly what, like it is. Some new artwork in here, but this is exactly like it is from the rule book itself. And then in the back, you're going to get the adventure from the rule book, the portal under the stars adventure, which is great because it's nice to be able to have this on the table as opposed to the huge rule book. But then there's a brand new adventure in here too called The Legend of the Silver Skull. And some ads for Dungeon Crawl Classics. If you haven't checked out Dungeon Crawl Classics, uh, there's going to be a lot more of that on the channel soon because I really, really enjoy it. So that's it. That was Free RPG Day 2020 review of all the great stuff that you could ex you expected to see this year. Flip through of each one of those. And then some of the stuff that hopefully we can look forward to in the future. Hopefully this has sparked some of your imaginations. And you're going to go and check out and support some of these companies as well, too. So until next time, I'm QuestWise. Be safe, my friends, and game on.